Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India particular after this virtual teams, multicultural teams, now we will talk about the how to build the great teams are there. In this team building, uh, four components of team building, uh, uh, team building processes, uh, types of team building exercise, uh, uh, 12 C's of team building, laws of team building, uh, five behavior of cohesive teams, turning individual into team player, uh, the case study, research papers and book recommendations uh, uh, that we will be referring. So, team building, uh, whenever we talk about the team building, uh, so it is a management technique used for the e efficiency and performance of work groups that, that we already we have gone through these particular concepts, right. So, uh, here, uh, but uh, what is required? It requires a lot of skills and analysis and observation for forming a strong and capable team is real, right. So, uh, it is a skillful job. Everybody will not be able to build the team, right, and uh, to achieve the organization vision and the objectives are there. So, uh, here, whenever we are talking about the great Great team require lots of skills, right? So some managers specialize in team building skills, uh, and are hired by the uh, companies on this parameter is there. The manager responsible for team building, right? Uh, so he must be able to find out the strengths and weaknesses of the team members and create the right mix of the people with the different skill sets are there. So whenever we are talking about the goal setting, the component is designed specifically to strengthen a team member's motivation uh, to achieve the team goals and the objectives are there. And whenever these team members, uh, uh, that, that, that is goal setting. So what is the goal of an individual? And that the goal of the individual that has to be matched uh, with the overall goal of the team and the overall goal of the team has to be matched with the vision of the organization. So that is the uh, motivation to achieve team goals and objectives, right. So team members are expected to become involved in action planning to identify ways to achieve those goals. That is how they can uh, uh, achieve those particular goals are there and therefore in that case uh, that collective, collective efforts are to be uh, made, right. So uh, first and foremost is uh, that is about the goal setting is there. The second is the role clarifications. So, it entails clarifying individual role expectations, uh, uh, group norms and the shared responsibilities of team member. So, role clarification can be used to improve team and individual characteristics, right. So, that is by reducing the role ambiguity is there. What is a role uh, ambiguity? Role ambiguity means uh, that you are playing the two roles. Suppose you are playing the role of a husband and role of a son and then there is a, uh, 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 the wife is saying the different decision and the mother is saying the uh, different uh, de decision, right? And now you have to follow, then uh, uh, to whom you will follow, right? So now you are into the role ambiguity. Which role I have to follow? I have to follow the role of a husband or I have to role of a son or a role. So therefore, in that case, uh, uh, that uh, it is up to you only. <laughs> and you, uh, therefore, that role clarification, that role clarification can be used, right? So that is the, then the somebody will tell you that is the what role is to be played. So, therefore, in that case, by uh, the, the work structure by negotiating, defining, right, then you can go for that particular role clarification is there. So, you, you have to negotiate, right, um, wherever you can negotiate with mother or with a wife, so that negotiating and defining is required. Now, the second is the interpersonal relations. It assumes uh, that the teams with fewer interpersonal conflicts uh, functions more effectively. Hmm? So, the teams with the greater number of the interpersonal conflicts are there. So, na naturally uh, that is the uh, whenever their interpersonal conflicts are less, right. So, interpersonal conflicts, uh, why there are interpersonal conflicts are there, as we have seen in the multi multicultural teams also. So, maybe because of that uh, diversity, cultural diversity is there, right, or there may be the personality differences are there. So, therefore, that interpersonal conflicts will arise, right, and uh, naturally the leader, what leader has to do? Leader has to manage that interpersonal 
uh, conflicts. Uh, lesser the fear will be the interpersonal conflicts, more will be the greater number of the uh, uh, the results, uh, better will be the results uh, there, right. Um, uh, so, team will be more effective. Uh, it involves an increase in teamwork skills, uh, mutual supportiveness, communication, sharing of feeling is there, whenever there will be the less conflicts and that is understood. Problem solved, this is very important point is there. Normally, what happens is that is the uh, whenever we are working in the organization, you find that uh, there are the certain problems are there. So, the fourth component emphasizes on the identification of major problems in the team's task to enhance the task related skills, right. And in, it is an intervention. The team members identify major problems, generate relevant information, engage in problem solving, action planning, implement and evaluate the um, action plans are there. So, therefore, always there will be the action plans that will be based on and that is the how, uh, how you are the team is able to uh, solve the problem uh, and uh, uh, the leader leader plays a very important role that is the whenever there is a problem and then the what action plan he decided and uh, that will be the solving the in, uh, interpersonal conflicts. Now, what are the advantages? The advantages are the first is uh, that we identify the strengths and weaknesses, right. So, therefore, in that case uh, uh, in team building uh, we understand uh, the strengths and weaknesses we direct towards the vision and mission, develop communication and collaboration, establishes roles and responsibilities, initiates creative thinking and problem solving, uh, builds trust and moral, uh, introduces and manages the change, facilitates delegation and better productivity is there. So, therefore, in that case uh, uh, all these advantages whenever you are able to uh, resolve these uh, interpersonal conflicts uh, making the team great team and team is directed uh, uh, to, uh, towards the achievement of goals, right. So, therefore, in that case uh, it, it is always uh, we have to understand that is every individual in the team is the different personality and uh, they, their thought process will be different, uh, their heredity environment and, 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 and uh, in a given situation that every team member will uh, act differently. So, therefore, in, uh, you have to un understand that is the who will uh, reacts and interacts in a given situation and accordingly the assignments of the team is to be given. Now, in uh, what is the team building process? So, identify the need for team building and uh, define the objectives and required set of skills is there. So, therefore, in that case uh, whatever the is there any need of team or not? That is the basic question. Now, you please understand many jobs can be done by the single person. And many times the individuals feel that there is no need of the team and why the boss is creating the team. So, therefore, why there is a need of the team that should be justified. Define objectives and required set of skills for the every uh, that particular job which the team has to perform, the task has to perform, they should have the required set of skills are there, otherwise the people are making the team, but they are not uh, uh, able to do. So, consider the team roles, uh, determine a team uh, building strategy right develop a team of individuals uh, who establish and communicate the rules uh, in identify individual strengths be a part of the team and monitor performance right and as a result of which then the schedule the meetings and dissolve the team is there so as we have seen that right from the forming so forming storming norming performing and adjourning is there so right from this forming right and then we until uh, it is uh, uh, the adjourning is there that every team has to dissolve and then that will be complete the total team building process is there. Now, identifying the need for the team building is there. Uh, first to analyze the requirement of a team for completing a particular task. It should find out the purpose of the work to be performed, uh, required skills for the jobs and its complexity before the forming a team is there. So, define objectives and required set of skills are there. So, next comes the uh, uh, chucking down of the organizational objectives and the skills needed to fulfill it is there. So, I would like to give the example that whenever we are having the deciding the uh, organizational objective for this particular financial year, we will be cutting the cost. Now, the, the team which is working, they, they should have that all, all that skills, so that they can contribute towards uh, the minimizing the cost. Uh, so, the, the, that type of the functions the, which are which are performed to be team, right. Uh, so, the, that has to be aligned with the organizational objectives. So, therefore, in that case, uh, this, rec but it, it requires a set of skills. A simple example is the uh, energy consumption and in the energy consumption, if you want to make the less energy consumption and then you, you if you have to go for the solar, 
right. So, therefore, in that case the those but uh, working on this uh, solar and uh, that particular uh, uh, skills are required for working on those type of the machineries which are working with the solar energies. So, consider the team roles in the various aspects interactions among the individuals their roles and responsibilities, strength and weaknesses composition and uh, suitability of the possible team members. So, therefore, in that came uh, who, who will play the what role because you are having the number of team members and therefore, in that case, but here it is to be connected about the, mm, the individual right and then they understand that is who can do what and, and who cannot do uh, the certain activities. So, therefore, if your uh, that strength and weaknesses uh, is properly analyzed about the individual then, then you can assign the role accordingly. Right. So, determine a team building strategy has to understand the uh, uh, operational framework uh, well to ensure an effective team building. He must himself be assured of the objectives, roles, responsibilities, duration, uh, availability of resources, training, the flow of information, feedback and building trust in the team is very, very important is there. So, therefore, in, in, in that case the leader he, he should be very clear about the uh, that what he wants to know why he, want, he is developing the team right and therefore in that case that manager or the leader uh, he will be assured to the objectives and roles that what roles are there and the responsibilities what responsibilities are to be um, bear by the team members and by himself duration ability of resources now when we are talking about the resources is main machine material money method minutes so therefore whatever the availability of the resources are there so then how uh, it, it should be available and once resources are provided then the person should be able to run uh, maintain these resources, utilize that resources and therefore, the proper training will be required. So, there uh, here it, it is also important that we talk about the team is a collective effort, but we have to develop the team of individuals. So, therefore, individuals are properly trained because we are having the strength and weaknesses. So, once we know the strength and weaknesses, then we can collect the information and can develop them and made familiar with his role and responsibilities right. And uh, another um, important aspect is the communicate the rules. Now, many times the leaders uh, they are not able to uh, express that what they really want and what are the rules are there, but if the somebody violates the rule and then they take the action and the, uh, the, the team member says I was not aware of this rule. So, communicate the rules right and therefore, here whenever the decisions are taken by the leader he will decide on the basis of this whatever the schedules are there and uh, accordingly the basis of the schedules he will uh, ask the team member to perform and when he is able to perform then there, there is no problem. If he is not able to perform then definitely in that case the manager has to manage uh, uh, all, all these uh, directions. So, identify the individual strength. So, various team building exercises are conducted to bring out the strengths of the individuals are there. It also helps in familiarizing the team members right. So, therefore, uh, with each other strengths and weaknesses also right. So, many times uh, when in the beginning itself uh, there are the number of the exercises are there and by those exercises they come to know about the each other. So, be a part of the team. So, at this point the manager needs to get involved with the team as a member and not as a boss. Hmm? So, therefore, he is the one of them making the individuals realize their importance in the team and treating each member uh, equally is necessary. Uh, the team members should see their managers as their team leader, mentor and role model. So, that, that role uh, of that particular team member and that, that will be definitely will be different. So, monitor the performance. Uh, next step is checking the productivity and performance of the team as a whole. Right. So, uh, because the once you identify the strengths and be a part of the strengths you have started working and now whether they are working uh, according to the expectations or not. So, finding out the loopholes and then, um, but naturally in the team process they might be possible that some are able to perform, some are not performing. So, find, find the loopholes and the reasons for it that is why they are not able to perform. This step is necessary to improve the team's performance and productivity in the long run. So, therefore, in that case uh, it is very, very important that is the whenever we are talking about the uh, monitoring the performance right that is always, always we have to see that is the it continues. Many times what happens? The team is performing, performing in the beginning then it, it goes down, then again it goes up, then again it goes down. So, therefore, this type of the monitoring performance uh, that will be creating a problem. So, that is to be properly monitored by the leader.
So schedule the meetings. One of the most crucial steps is to be hold purposeful meeting and from time to time to discuss team performance, um, whatever the task related problems and discuss the future course of action. Now you see that is the many times the team members uh, um, they are frustrated of the meeting. Right, that is the the, uh, uh, the manager is uh, calling the meeting again and again. But here we have to understand that that is the unless and until the meetings are not organized, uh, that com proper communication will not be there, and whatever the goal, objectives, feedback is there, that will be discussed in the meetings only. And finally, it is a dissolved team. The manager needs to evaluate the results and reward the individuals on their contribution and achievement is there. So, therefore, the, the fair evaluation is to be done because the ultimately goal has been uh, achieved, that is why the team has been uh, dissolved normally. So, therefore, the team is dispersed on the fulfillment of the objectives for which it was formed and on the basis of this uh, uh, that uh, the, the task is completed and the team will be dissolved. Um, what, what, what are the challenges or the potential pitfalls while the team building is there? So, managers should avoid the expecting a new team to perform effectively from the word go. So, they, it is not like right, they, it is a start and then the, the, the team will be starting performing. No, um, from the world ago it will take some time. Dominating the work of the team whether the in intentionally or unconsciously, do not dominate the team members. Exercising excessive control which may stifle creativity. So, allow to be them the creative right and do not to make them the, uh, the interference uh, in their work. Overlooking the influence of formal and informal team roles. Now, you see every team is performing certain formal jobs which has been told. Right? But simultaneously there are the informal roles also. For example, the supporting each other. So, supporting each other is the formal also and in that case somebody is in the problem and is doing somebody else is doing his job it is the informal also. So, therefore, in that case uh, manager should not uh, 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 overlook this type of the, uh, the formal and informal roles. Allowing the team to lose focus on the tasks to be completed and the allowing individuals to take credit for the achievement of the team is there. So, therefore, it is uh, uh, allow the team these uh, to lose the focus that will that will be a big problem. So, the team has to be focused one and that is by the monitoring allowing individuals to take credit for the achievements of the team. No. It is a collective effort. So, therefore, uh, avoid uh, that somebody takes the, um, the credit for himself maybe the leader leader should also avoid. So, being overly dependent on providers of the team building activities this can help, but their role in developing a team needs to be carefully managed. So, therefore, in that case uh, team building activities uh, uh, these uh, developing a, 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 a team right that is has to be carefully to be managed automatically materialized at the end of the team building course. So, therefore, in that case it is not that is the uh, the ones the team has formed. So, they will automatically will start performing they will give the results no that monitoring is required. Now, how the team building exercises can be done? So, one is the communication exercise. So, improve the problem solving activities and uh, data geared uh, towards improving communication skills and the issues that teams encounter. The problem solving decision making exercises are there focus on the groups working together to solve the difficult problems to make complex decisions. So, planning adaptability exercises are there and aspects of the planning and adaptability to change and this is important for teams to be able to do when they are assigned complex tasks or decisions are there. The trust exercises are there. So, involve the engaging team members to induce trust. So, therefore, in that case communication, problem solving, planning and adaptability and the trust exercise. So, therefore, in that case whenever we are talking about uh, these exercises and depending on the comfort levels of participants are required and therefore, in that case you will be able to build the building the team is there. Now, what are the 12 C's of this team building? So, clear of uh, clear expectations, context, commitment, competence, uh, charter, mission and vision, the control, collaboration, communication, creative innovations, consequence, coordination and cultural diversity is there. So, we have talked about these uh, dimensions also that is the how these dimensions uh, uh, will be affecting to making the um, great team. A law of building team, law of significance is there, one is too small a number to achieve the greatness is there, right. So, therefore, in that case all, all have contributed. Law of the big picture, the goal is more important than the role is there. So, therefore, in that case achievement of goal is that is the uh, we have to focus on that. Law on the position, a sign of a great team leader is the proper placement of people. Law of Mount Everest, you do not climb a mountain like Everest by trying to race ahead on your own or by competing 
with your comrades. You do it slowly and carefully by unselfish teamwork. So, Sherpa Tenzing uh, Norge submitted Mount Everest with the Edmund Hillary in 1953, right. So, law of the chain, the strength of the team is the impact by the weakest link is there. Law of the catalyst, uh, winning teams have players who make things happen. Laws, law of the compass, uh, vision gives team members direction and confidence is there. So, moral compass is there, spontaneous compass, historical compass, directional compass, strategic compass and visionary compass is there. So, therefore, uh, this, uh, whenever we are having this type of the building the team, so then there will be the morality that is to be taken uh, care of. The spontaneous, uh, spontaneity, spontaneously decisions are to be done. Uh, then we have to also understand that is what has happened in the past, how it has been done. Directional compass, what will be the future and accordingly the designing the strategy strategies and therefore, you will be able to achieve your goal. So, that is the reason. So, law of the bad apple, rotten attitudes in a team. So, therefore, attitudes are uh, not uh, uh, rotten attitude uh, that, that should be avoided. Law of the price check, the team fails to reach its potential when it fails to pay the price, right. So, I, I, I always uh, it is the uh, whatever the, the, the work has been done by this uh, particular team, right and that is up to his extreme potential. Right. So, therefore, in that case, uh, uh, the, the, it, it, it will be always uh, better that is we, uh, we explore the potential as much as possible. Law of communication, interactions, the fuel, the action is there. So, this is the, uh, these are the five behaviors of building the cohesive team is there. That is a trust, conflict, commitment, accountability and the results are there. And on uh, therefore, in the case, uh, it is uh, building the trust, uh, mastering the conflict, uh, that is a constructive debate is to be organized, right. Vulnerability without fear of the repercussions uh, that is to be there. Uh, achieving the commitment, uh, clarification and buy-in is there. Embracing the accountability, full attainment of the commitments and the focusing on the results, focus on the collective. To, uh, outcome is there. So, therefore, right from the building the trust, uh, managing the conflicts, uh, increasing the commitment, uh, developing the accountability and achieving the results or goals are there. So, therefore, these five behaviors of the building cohesive team is the building the high levels of trust and then the productive and well intentioned uh, conflict is there is considered dangerous on a team because it can lead to the hard feelings. However, if the team has relationship trust, members will secure enough to be honest and uh, courageous. If the trust is truly in place, conflict is constructive. Uh, teams without conflict tend to shut out a valuable feedback which can lead to the poor decision making is there. Strong commitment to the team decisions and standards is required and therefore, in that case reaching the consensus means the compromise and compromise might not only yield the best result. Com commitment comes with the clarity of purpose, take a problem for which there are several ideas are there. Uh, with the trust and appropriate conflict, the team chooses the idea they will pursue uh, and uh, though only one idea is chosen, every member understands why that idea was selected and supports the idea both inside the team and when communicating externally is there. When we are talking about the accountability is a typically the most difficult behavior uh, for a team to master. So, most will never get to the point where each team member routinely holds all the members accountable. Reaching and maintaining the good scores in the previous steps will make accountability uh, much easier, right. So, therefore, that is the how much uh, um, the work has been done and how it has been performed. So, that will be the previous accountability that will clarify uh, to give the, the next responsibility. Accountability can become part of teams overall dynamic is there. Focus on what is the best for the team results is there, why the team exists. Right. So, if each prior behavior is functioning well, each member of the team is focused on achieving the team goals and the team goal becomes more important than any individual's personal goals and everyone feels rewarded being part of the team results are there. You know, so, uh, shaping the team players, how to shape the selecting employees who can fulfill their team roles. Now, here you see that is the matching, that is a personality job fit. And whatever the roles uh, the leader knows that what are the different roles are there and then he has to identify who is having that particular strength and weakness and then accordingly uh, the, you, you have to uh, give that uh, uh, employee selecting roles are to be given and then he will be able to fulfill those roles. So, this analytical uh, approach of the leader is very much necessary. So, uh, this uh, the team member will also enjoy and leader will also enjoy. 
training employees to become team players. Now, sometimes you do not find that particular quality, one or two qualities are lacking, right? The rest of the qualities are there. So, then in that case, uh, the training can be provided. Uh, reworking the reward systems to encourage cooperative efforts while continuing to recognize individual contributions, and therefore, in that case, that reward system can be implemented. Some people already possess the interpersonal skills to be effective team members. So, when hiring the team members, the technical skills required to fill the job, uh, care should be taken to ensure that candidates can fulfill their team roles as well as the technical requirements. Candidates go under a training transfer to another unit within the organization without teams, uh, do not hire the candidate is there, right. So, therefore, already possess. Training is there, raise on individual accomplishment can be trained to become team players. Training specialists conduct the exercises that allow employees to experience the satisfaction that teamwork can provide. And they help employees to improve their problem solving, communication, negotiation, conflict management and the coaching skills are there. And the, finally, the rewards. The reward system needs to be reworked to encourage co cooperative efforts, rather the competitive ones is there, right? That, that, that is to be taken care of, right? So, it is not it, it is not creating the more conflict. Reward system should not create the more conflict, rather than it should be encouraging and motivating. Promotions, pay rises and other forms of recognition should be given to individuals for low effective, uh, they are as collaborative team members, uh, how effective they are uh, as a collaborative uh, team members are there. So, therefore, in the that case, uh, it, it will be very, very important that is the whenever we are giving these uh, uh, the any rewards to any individual. So, how they were effective right as a collaborative team members that is to be considered. And uh, this does not mean individual contributions are ignored, rather they are balanced with the selfless contributions to the team is there. And therefore, we have to understand uh, that is the, those who are giving the selfless uh, uh, their uh, contribution to the making the team successful and achieve the goal and they should be appreciated. As usual, this is the case study in the growing company uh, manufacturer, the Columbia Corporation. Uh, in this case study, you will find about uh, these questions. What issues must be resolved to create an effective executive team? And the what types of the changes are needed in how much leads the team is there? And this is a research paper that is a team building, employee empowerment and employee competencies. And uh, this particular pa uh, 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 the paper um, view an organizational perspective of learning to create a strong theoretical foundation by exploring the effects of team building, employee empowerment and organizational learning culture on employees competency is there. So, that organizational learning culture signifies strengthen the relationship of a team building and employee empowerment on employee competencies are concerned. So, this is a this is the book team building book proven strategies for improving the team performance and uh, therefore, in that case uh, it, it will be talking about uh, that is the uh, how uh, this particular uh, uh, these uh, the context compositions competencies and change right. They are, they are used for making a very very effective team and the book is also supported uh, by these uh, uh, these uh, illustrative examples right and therefore, with those examples also. So, that will also help you to how, how to build a and great team is there. So, the uh, leaders, team members, team consultants, knowledge and skills, they need to create the effective and high functional teams are there. So, these are the references which you can use further for your studies, right. And uh, this is all about that is how to make a uh, big team or the great team uh, in the organization context. Thank you.